Yeah, he fell off the other day, I guess. Aww. She still has a fair, she still has a fair number of like unadoptable uh-huh. ones, like got FIVs that we can't adopt them out. And it's just never going to be a good house pet. Right. She's feral. So I find where the leg attaches to the back. That's where I disconnect the legs. Custom metered over it. You know, that was an option was the because it's it's got the, the landing at the top which is level with the bed. The landing. And then there's a landing halfway down. Oh, so you can rest. Yeah, and it gives him security because otherwise it'd be like a long ramp and it'd be kind of intimidating. So he's got a landing halfway down. So it's going to be. With a cushion. I think. 85 inches base length, you know, to give him a, a shallow enough slope that it's not. Oh, good, thank you. It's an escalator, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> well, I told her, like, we'll have the ramp so he can go up and we'll put the curly slide to come back down. <laughs> well, I'm going to need to build a ramp for Oliver soon. I'm not picking that 95-pound dog up and putting him on the bed. How old is Oliver? He's nine and a half. And he's uh, starting to develop some arthritis. Being a big dog when you get older. Yeah, he's on his. Thanks, Sue. Thanks, Sue. Yeah, he's on his uh, glucosamine every day. Oh, I like this better. Yeah, we did our chat that. I wasn't ever sure that you wanted to do that. I think it's doing doing some good for Oliver. You say glucosamine? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we always saw him. He's not as stiff. He gets up quicker. We always gave that to Sammy from the get-go, because she was built so weird as mm-hmm. a passive mix. Yeah, we figured we might as well do it from the beginning and yeah. prevent any bad stuff. And he just thinks he's cool that he gets a, a treat that Ozzy doesn't get. I was dog sitting last week in Boston in the Boston Pug Mix. And the Boston gets Prozac every morning. Oh my gosh. And the other one gets like a placebo just because. So he's not left out. <laughs> Certified fish mush. Parts of the skull have been ossified, but there's still this this big window of opaque, soft skull. So this is another hatchier bird that hatched the spring of 2000, 2014 and died in November of the same year. It's a hatchier bird. It's 
skull is probably 50% ossified. So now we're going to open it up and see if it was male or female. So again, we've got a young male. It's two teeny weeny little white dots are testes. Kind of tough to see when they're not breeding. Write that down. Now we're going to look in his stomach. It looks like we've got a whole bunch of seed mushed up, which makes sense for a junco. And there's little bits of grit, little teeny stones that birds will eat to help them digest. So are we in Texas for Thanksgiving? No. Right. Seed and grit. Now I'm going to take a tissue sample. Oh. Tape on the tube to protect the data. How about you? Did you stay here? Pardon? How about you? Did you stay here? Yeah, we had all my family from Columbus up and staying over a couple days. And then we were going to school in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Okay, I don't hate to say this. Messiah College? November, so he has a lot of fat packed on him, keeping him warm. So I have to pick all the fat off of the skin, otherwise it will rot and smell pretty foul, and the skin will not last very long. What? Oh no, this is a junko. Oh. The chicken is next. What year is your? I mean, what month is your junko? Uh, November, November nineteenth. This year. 14. I'm having a hard time. Are blue jays hard to get around their rump? Uh, not particularly. They have a muscly butt, so maybe there's just still some some meat some meat hanging on. Birds got some blue So again, I'm just taking the meat off of the wing. I do that by Kind of snip it at the base of the tendons. Cutting off that humerus. We don't need it.
move on to the other wing. Um, we had six house sparrows in our collection. That's it. 